Hi, this is Mark Laughlin with the Ambidextral Gunfighter. We have a familiar looking box here by Mossberg. Hmm. As you know, I've done a review on the MC1SC. Now we have the MC2C. I'm going to actually call this the Mossberg McTuC. McTuC for short. I uh, just don't want to stumble over all that those letters. So Mossberg McTuC. Now, if you know uh, from my previous video on the Mossberg MC1SC, the smaller compact version, the uh, single stack, uh, six round capacity with the flush mag. This is a 13 round capacity with the flush mag. Now my process is to, is to thoroughly clean these pistols and uh, completely degrease them, remove all that, uh, the rust inhibitors and the lubricants that come from the factory, and then apply Century Solutions Tough Glide. And then I practice, uh, spend, uh, in this case, I spent almost a week and a half doing, uh, uh, running, like practicing the manual of arms with the plastic dummy rounds, and then also doing dry fire practice with the laser cartridge uh, training, uh, laser training cartridge. And then I've also recently added uh, doing the analysis of the dry fire practice with the Mantis X10 Elite. Very cool product. Now, this new Mossberg, this MC2C, the MC2C, narrowly squeaks past the, the Hellcat on a rounds on the rounds per size and weight spreadsheet. Uh, this uh, pistol ends up in third place overall for all stock nine millimeters. Uh, the Glock 48 and the 43X leap to the top when they are paired with the Shield Arms S15 magazines. Although just on a rounds per square inch, that's the height and width, the MC2C surpasses even the uh, one of the S the 43X S15 equipped Glock, and it surpasses the Hellcat easily on uh, kinetic energy per round, kinetic energy weighted rounds per size and weight, and uh, because of its uh, 3.9 inch barrel versus a uh, about a 3 inch barrel on the Hellcat. So that not only gives you an extra uh, ballistic advantage, a little more muzzle velocity, uh, it also gets you some additional sight radius, making this pistol easier to shoot accurately. Now, one of the things I like about the uh, about this is it has this really uh, nice beveling on the slide that makes it uh, fit up against your body nicely when pressed up on a, in an inside the waistband holster. And then the slide is what's called DLC coated. It's a dark, what's known as diamond-like carbon finish. Now I thought that was just some like marketing hoo-ha, but it turns out I looked it up on Google and it is actually a process of an application of this really thin hardened coat that's, that's known for hardness, lubricity, and it allows the serrations or other, uh, you know, funk, uh, features on the metal that's being coated to show through very cleanly, not be, you know, um, kind of shadowed out. And so these, uh, the slide serrations remain sharp and crisp, even though they're coated with this DLC. Now, one thing the DLC does is, it, while it meets a really nice, nice finish, it does create a bit of a reflection here on the top of the slide, and it's possible with the lights at the right angle for you to, when you look down there, to actually see a reflection of the front sight on the top of the slide. And uh, that could, you know, when milliseconds counts, maybe that could uh, slow you a little bit in reaction time or, or finding your sights and getting them on target. Or you could find the wrong sight. You could see that reflection and be using that instead of the real sight. So uh, I think it would, could benefit from something like what the, uh, the Walther PPQ has the, this kind of diffuse these cuts on the top of the slide that help diffuse uh, light and prevent that reflection from occurring. Now this uh, 
The MC2C has the same great serrations as the MC1SC, the one that uh, everyone noted during our bloody hands testing, that you, whenever you came to the, MC, the MC1SC with the slick bloody hands, you, had, you knew you weren't going to have any problems operating the slide. And that pretty much applies to the MC2C as well. Um, I would like to see the front slide serrations add a few more slashes through there or shift them back a little bit. Now maybe it's just me because I am I'm accustomed to the uh, MC1 SC where when I bring my hand up here right in front of the trigger guard it's right on the slide serrations and on the MC2Z when I bring my hand right up in front of the trigger guard I'm missing the slide serrations and and i really don't as much as possible i don't want to go out as any further to the muzzle than i need to so i would like to better have slide serrations about right in there so the slide serrations need to be moved to the rear either three quarters of an inch or extended uh, an extra three quarters of an inch now now one cool thing is the web of your thumb fits up really high in the beaver tail and you can actually just with a very loose practically not even holding it and just relying exclusively on the web of your thumb you can actually rack the slide because uh, the bore axis is so low on this pistol it's kind of, and um, also uh, it has kind of a little bit of a relief in here at the top of the grip for the forefinger and the thumb kind of like what the sig 365 series does it isn't quite as pronounced on this i kind of wish it was because i really like that feature on the sig p365 series but that does thin that up just a little bit there where your thumb and fork finger gripped and we're going to come back to that when we talk about the apple great apple gate uh, grip index now the trigger out of the box it kind of had these uh, multiple stages of take up and uh, a lot of kind of this creep and it was like multiple before you actually got to the wall and it broke but after cleaning and dry lubing and then firing it it is this trigger is better than most it's not quite a it's not a Walther PPQ trigger or HK VP9 trigger, but it's not too far behind. And really, probably one of the better triggers amongst these really serious concealed carry pistols. So, basically, this is a 13 round pistol in a very thin inside the waistband carry package. That it, and it basically it won't displace displace your belt line so much when you carry it inside the waistband very thin very narrow in fact it's basically the same thickness as the m the single stack mc1 sc i think there's maybe a, a couple of hundreds extra uh, width on the grip part basically just where the grip flares a little bit here has a little bit of a to fill your hand a little more but now the it does have a five inch grip height so it is a little bit uh, taller than a lot of the you know like the 365s or the the hellcat or even the 365 xl it's a little bit taller than that but so in that regard it is pushing the limits of you know ideal conceal carry you're gonna that that is sometimes considered the difficult part to conceal is this heel of the grip but with it being so overall so thin overall I think it's a pretty good trade-off. This is actually uh, a quarter inch narrower than the Walther PPQ. It's two tenths of an inch narrower than the FNS 9C. It's uh, pretty much the same as most of its other peers, like the Hellcat, the Glock 48, the Sig P365 series, and the size and weight differences are pretty negligible. Um, but the shootability of the Mctuzzi is better than the Hellcat. It's partly because of that longer barrel and the longer sight radius and of course uh, you got a full you know grip. You get your you not have you don't have the dangling pinky there like you do on the Hellcat. Now I think the I think this, the finish on this, this DLC finish, is better than the SIG. SIG's kind of had some little bit of issues, I think, there in regards to the finish on their pistols. Uh, I, my kids don't mind. They just they, they say it gives their pistol character. Uh, this doesn't seem to show any signs of developing character because the finish is so good on it. Um, 
Now the the serrations on this are, are better than the SIG or better than basically anything else. The Hellcats are kind of poor so it really does well with the slide serrations. They're very grippy in one direction and slide forward let your hand slide forward in the other. As we called it in the previous review on the MC one SC, uh, it's almost a cheese grater effect. I mean, it's not like it's going to tear the skin off your fingers, but maybe it would if <laughs> if it was that or or lose your grip. I don't know. If I had to describe it, I might say the McTuzzi is an American-made, high-quality, exceptional value G48 with three extra rounds. Now the, G the Glock 48 is really only rescued by another American company, Shield Arms, with their S15 magazines. Now some other things I like, uh, it's got the squared off a little bit, the, the trigger guard here to kind of, if you want to bring your, you know, a support hand finger around in front of the trigger guard. I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying not to do that, but uh, I mean, you have that there so you can kind of get a bite on that. Uh, you also have a uh, good texture on the grip where they where it's needed but not where you don't need it so that should make it a little more comfortable up against your, against your skin when uh, inside the waistband and then you have the landing points for indexing your trigger finger or your thumbs forward hold now the safe takedown is one of the unique features of the McTuzzi and I was actually demonstrating the safe takedown system to the owner of the gun shop that handled the transfer of this pistol and I was explaining how I thought the real benefit was that during field stripping that I routinely clean the striker channel whereas with my other pistols they rarely get any attention to the striker channel it just it's such it's kind of a hassle to pull that striker plate off on most pistols but I could see that this uh, the gun um, the manager at the gun store he was uh, he was taking this all in with great interest and after my demonstration he showed me a photo of a friend's hand shot through while pulling the trigger during while field stripping a Glock now for those of us who possess a certain you know muzzle awareness and are paranoid about chamber checks uh, the safe takedown system seems like a gimmick and I know many of us have mocked it but when thought of in the context of this recent rush of new gun owners in 2020 gun, gun dealers really should be emphasizing this feature and it really is nice to keep the striker channel clean I figure that that probably reduces the risk of light strikes slam fires and it potentially reduces the risk of a failure of this uh, striker block, the safety. So I think instead of calling the safe takedown system, Mossberg should call it the SCS. Safer, cleaner, and sleeker. Sleeker because you don't have the takedown levers, you don't have the takedown tabs, it's just all handled here on your, your striker plate. Now everyone shot the MC1 SC very well and the MC2 basically is going to magnify that result with the longer grip and the longer sight radius. It's a very shootable pistol, uh, very easy to keep it on target, uh, mild recoiling. Uh, it is a little bit heavier uh, than what their stated, uh, their stated spec on this is 21 ounces and in my weighing of it, it turns out I found it to be 23 ounces. Now if it could shave off that extra two ounces and actually get it down to 21 it would actually push it up it wouldn't gain any positions but it would be in a very solid position of head of lot the most of the big popular uh, concealed carry pistols as it is right now it's really kind of it's it's a head but it's kind of tied with the Hellcat and, and uh, the SIG 365 XL now one of the things uh, in a fourth cut in a forthcoming video series, I'll be testing a hypothesis based upon my new metric, what I call the Applegate Grip Index. That is the ratio of grip width to grip length. So basically a long grip versus a more rounded grip, like the, uh, the Walther PPQ has a pretty roundish grip. Almost not as round as a dowel rod or a closet rod, but certainly uh, uh, pretty round. 
And um, the MC2C, the MC2C has a grip index of 1.98, which is the highest for any double stack that I have measured. And my hypothesis is that a high grip index and translates to better pointability and a reduced tendency to pull the muzzle off target when squeezing the trigger. Think of a pistol, you know, I've invented a new pistol that has a closet rod grip. I call it the bat grip pistol. And it has this nice big fat round grip and it's pretty difficult to you know, index on exactly where that muzzle is pointed to. Now compare that to my new razor grip pistol, which is basically holding the, the grip is like a razor blade. Uh, that indexes very, very well and has a very, very high grip index. Now, this is just a hypothesis at this point, and, uh, but so there will be some empirical testing, and that's exactly why I actually looked at uh, getting a Mantis X10 Elite to do some comparison on how well different pistols do uh, with the Mantis type scoring. Now, with the ammo shortages, now is a exceptionally good time to get a training laser and also get the Mantis X10 Elite. Now the re a review of the latter is forthcoming, but trust me, just go ahead and get one. Now another thing is that the MC2Z has beautiful Italian 77 gram 13 round flush magazine and a 15 round extended which is about the same height, gives it about the same grip height as the 15 round Walther PPQ. Now the mag release is standing pretty proud and but it is with very good placement for fast reloads. You don't even have to shift your hand to hit it but it is going to be prone to accidental disengagement of the magazine if you bump into things or if, it, if you get hit really hard in the side um, it could potentially uh, cause a, a disengagement of your magazine and then if you needed to pull your pistol out in a self-defense situation uh, the number of rounds that you have are going to be the number of rounds that you have in the chamber because your magazine is probably going to fall out or you're going to fire that, that one shot and it's going to then it's not going to be cycle a new round so you're going to have to tap rack bang to get uh, another round off so I think this would greatly benefit from a paddle magazine release to prevent accidental disengagement. It would also deliver full ambi functionality for magazine release and also allow an excellent pinch operation. You can see this would work very well with my pinch operation technique on the paddle magazine release so that you can maintain a firm grip on the pistol while you're shaking out a magazine, and, you know, shaking out an empty mag that might be really lightweight, might be a little bit stuck in there. So the way I look at it, I rarely carry an extra magazine, so the whole ambi pinch thing is of limited value, but, but having a disengage mag when needed means you may find your magazine on the ground during a self-defense situation. They should really consider adding a paddle magazine. With the release of Caltex Popular P17, there will be an influx of new shooters who learn the charms of the Paddle Magazine release and will want to retain that when they progress to a 9mm. So, and it's kind of cool that these two pistols, the P17, there's a lot of similarity to, to the, between them. Uh, length is kind of similar, the barrel length or overall length, grip height is similar with the uh, P17 is a little bit thinner but the the grip feel is very similar between the two so this would be really nice to have for those when they are ready to advance from the P17 to a 9mm if Mossberg would make a paddle magazine release on this this would be perfect upgrade for people from the P17 world now a lot of times Mossberg is thought of in you know, a lot of the shooting circles as this FUD shotgun company. And it's really cool that this is their second 9mm pistol and, and both of them are quite exceptionally well done. And hey, did you know that they have ARs too? Well, who doesn't make ARs but I sure didn't know Mossberg did. 
Uh, so inter interesting, you know, check out their ARs. You think of them as just being a shotgun company, there's a lot more there. So check out their pistols, check out their shotguns, and they've got good self-defense shotguns. And then, of course, check out their ARs. Now, I'm not a fan of ARs anymore. I'm, I'm pretty much an AR I consider a relic uh, com when compared to like the Caltech RDB or a Desert Tech MDR. But that's from the ambidextral gunfighter perspective. Okay, so in sum. M McTuzzi. What is the Mossberg McTuzzi? What is its advantage over its peers? One, the safe takedown system. Safer and cleaner. And slimmer. Let's they talk about snag free. You know, SIG talks about their SAS as being snag free. This is a snag free pistol. One, second, Applegate grip index is better than the Hellcat. It's it's elongated enough where you gotta definitely can tell which way this pistol's pointed and you get a good grip on it and it's not gonna wanna bend one way or the other. Whereas the Hellcat and the SIGs, uh, the Hellcat more so is more boxy and squarish. The SIG at least has that channel so you can kinda get a indexing on that, the channel they've cut for your thumb and forefinger. Slide serrations, another huge, huge advantage. Probably the, the best slide serrations of any pistol. I just need to move them back a bit. So basically, excellent point shooting ergonomics. Exceptionally slim for inside the waistband belt displacement. Now the other thing, you know, we talk about the Mossberg having the, you know, ARs and stuff. They do also make some really terrific bolt action rifles. Now we'll be doing a review on their MVP Predator, which we've had for years and is exceptionally accurate. And uh, that's in the 5.56 and it actually, it's a bolt action rifle that uses uh, AR magazine. So it's a really cool little rifle. We'll, we'll roll that out and do a review on that here shortly. Now another feature is that this is this pistol as opposed to say a Glock 48 which is made in Austria. The McTuzzi is made in Eagle Pass, Texas, America by a truly American com company. So if you want the best Glock 48 out of the box, get a McTuzzi. If you want the pride of owning an American made handgun, get the Mossberg McTuzzi. If you don't mind all of the third-party upgrades, sights, the mag button, and the S15 magazines, go with the Glock 48. It's a terrific setup with those Shield Arms magazines. But if you like the idea of keeping your striker channel clear and clean and lubed, get the McTuzzi. Now, if the McTuzzi had a paddle magazine release, my preference over the Glock 48 would be unequivocal. Thinking of the marginal utility of each additional round, I'd much prefer the confidence of knowing that my mags will be stay will stay seated, the magazine will stay seated for any needed follow-up shops, rather than worrying that I might need that round 14 or 15 of a S15 magazine as opposed to the 13 round on this. The McTuzzi is among the highest capacity per size and weight, yet highly shootable concealed carry pistols on the market. It has the kinetic en energy advantage over the 365s and its Hellcat peers. A price point difference advantage over the Glock 48. All coupled with quality craftsmanship from a long established American firearms company. It's Mark Laughlin with the Ambidextral Gunfighter. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.